Okay, I'm ready. So Hi, hello. Yep. Oh, I'm Simon. Uh, we've got two decks of cards here. Uh, we're going because my name's Simon. We're going to play game of Simon Says. Okay. Pretty easy, okay. very simple. Uh, so I think I'm going to give you the red deck of cards to hold on to. I'm going to have the blue. And so simple thing: go Simon Says, shuffle the deck. So you would shuffle the deck. Okay. Nice nails, by the way. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Trying to you know everything goes. Um, but if I said uh, cut the deck, you wouldn't because Simon didn't say. Okay. Got it? Uh, yep. Okay, Good. I get it. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll try it. So Simon says shuffle the deck. Yep. So this is playing for reals. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm not yep. very good at trust. Sorry, go over. Hit Simon says cut the deck. Yep, so that's where you take half off and put on the top. So, yep, perfect for you. Okay. Hit shuffle the deck. Hey, you did good. Awesome. Oh. Good, nice one. Okay. <laughs> uh, Simon says swap decks. Brilliant, okay. Simon says, look for any card near the middle that you like the look of. Hmm. I haven't. Yeah, you got one. And just poke it out the deck a bit. Wonderful. Simon says, take the card out. And Simon says, put it on top of the deck. Brilliant, okay. And now Simon says, cut the deck. Perfect. And then Simon says, swap back decks. Amazing, right. Game over. Okay. Okay. We're going to see if you did exactly what Simon said. Okay. So I want you to go through that deck and find the card that you chose. I'm going to go through this one and find the one that I chose. Okay. okay? You did? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I count three, we're going to show them to each other. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> oh my god, how? Very well. Very well. <laughs> That's party tricks. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Party Tricks with me, your friendly neighbourhood magician Simon South. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the seventh show, I believe, that we've done so far at Party Tricks, so it's all going well so far. I uh, hope you're enjoying it over there in the weird world of the internet. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so the first thing to talk about today is the, in the 83rd International Brotherhood of Magicians British Ring Convention in Eastbourne. Uh, that's happening on the 5th till the 8th of September. Now, the IBM is one of the biggest uh, magic kind of groups in the entire world. They have a, uh, a base in America, they have a base in the UK, um, they have bases like, all over the world, and it's the, it's the one that you kind of like join up. It's, I'm trying to think, it's like if, if you're in business, it's like BNI kind of thing. It's the best way to kind of, uh, it, it's nothing like BNI in the terms of business thing, but just, you know, the wide reach that the IBM has. Um, you know, you, you can always go to somewhere and the IBM will be there kind of thing. That's the best way to sort of. Uh, sort of show it out there. Uh, so yeah, so they have their uh, their big massive convention coming up, and it's a four day long convention, which is quite interesting. Uh, it's going to be quite good. I said in Eastbourne, the program has just been released. There are thirty artists, thirty magicians. There's going to be ten lectures. There are seven individual one man shows, and there's going to be two competitions as well, which is going to be quite awesome. Uh, so we have uh, we have some we have some top lecturers going to be there. Uh, one man shows workshops as well. Uh, the lectures are going to be uh, from Joshua, De uh, Joshua J, who runs uh, Vanishing Inc. with Andy Gladwin, who we've talked about before, who helps run the session, and other things like that. Very tall Canadian man who's been on uh, Penn and Teller Foolers. Uh, I think he fooled them, which was uh, brilliant, really, really good. Did this trick where he... Uh, uh, said, you know, he wants to do magic for a blind person, and uh, how do you do a card trick for a blind person? And created this whole wonderful, beautiful magic trick um, where, you know, the person just thought in their head what the card was, you know, so I think it was, uh, if you had a deck of cards, I can't do it, um, but it was something like they're thinking of the Seven of Diamonds, so they you know, put down S E V E N O F D I A M N D O S, and, you know, obviously he looked away while he did that. And then uh, when it when it came to the end, it was you know I'm going to see if I can find what the card is. And when he found it, obviously the person he was performing for is blind, so we just wait. You know, if we got it right, then the audience has to let you know whether or not we got it right. Turned it around, and it was the right card. And obviously the audience went mental. I was like, oh, that's amazing, that's great. And he went, well, the very weird thing is obviously um, with you being blind, you wouldn't know this, and the audience didn't know this either. And then he showed the deck, and every single other card in the deck was blank apart from the seven of diamonds, mm -hmm. which was it was a beautiful, really, really nice trick. 
Um, I thought it was quite lovely, really, really nice. Uh, so, yeah, so he's going to be there um, doing a lecture, which is going to be really, really good. Uh, if you're not quite sure who he is or anything like that, again, uh, I've mentioned it before to check out Penguin Live Magic, where he does have a lecture on Penguin Live Magic. I think he's got two of them. So go and see what's on there. If you like what you see, then get yourself down to Eastbourne to go and check out the convention. We also have the twins. The twins are going to be lecturing, uh, doing a Q&A session. Now, I've not heard of the twins for years. Um, they used to do a lot of TV work back in, uh, back in the day like 90s, early 2000s kind of thing. But they just kind of disappeared off the scene. Um, and what they tended to do now is uh, they make illusions. So uh, they make illusions for lots of pantomimes in London, um, lots of other bits. And I think they worked on Les Mis as well, um, and lo loads of other things like that. So anything that might need some form of magic effect, whether it's, you know, trying to hang someone, like for instance in Les Mis, or, you know, other bits and pieces, then what happens is an art director will go to the twins and go, we want to do this, how do we do it? And then, you know, they'll give them money and they'll figure out a method of how to do this really cool thing that they need to happen. Um, but they're actually going to be at the, uh, the IBM, which is going to be very interesting. Um, so they're going to be talking, they're going to do a Q&A session about what it is they do and if anyone's got any questions about illusions or anything like that, just ask them and they'll try and help you out with stuff. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Scott Penrose is going to be there as well. Scott Penrose, I mentioned before, is the current president of the Magic Circle, um, who does a wonderful Dove Act, um, very, very nice act. Uh, Chris Wardle's going to be there. I'm not quite sure who he is, but I've heard he's uh, a good act. James Friedman. You might have seen James Friedman actually a lot on, uh, on, on Facebook and Instagram and that kind of thing. Um, he's doing lots and lots of videos at the moment of just, you know, card tricks. Like he's going out and about and doing card tricks for people and just doing little silly things to camera and stuff. So he's kind of gone like, a bit viral, really, uh, James Friedman. So, you know, you might have seen him before. Uh, Mike Sullivan's going to be there, who's very, an older magician, uh, very, very good at what he does. Oliver Tabor is going to be there, uh, who has won um, many awards in the past. This beautiful thing where he made a, a full-size cello vanish on stage which was amazing. You can watch it on YouTube. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, it's a very, uh, this whole thing as a, um, as a composer. So the whole idea is that he's got his, uh, he's got a little, com his composing, so I can't remember, it's got a proper name, but I don't know what it's called. Um, and uh, pretending to conduct, that's, yeah, conducting wand, conducting baton. There we go. Uh, and pretending to conduct uh, while, the, the, while the music's being played over it and it vanishes and, goes somewhere else and then he tries to pull out an instrument, makes an instrument appear and uh, and then that all vanishes. It's, it's wonderful. It's really, really nice. That He's currently working with uh, a burlesque act called Vicky Butterfly and they're doing, a, uh, they're doing a show together, which is really, really awesome. So I imagine Vicky Butterfly will be there as well as part of his show. Uh, Edward Hilson is going to be there, who I mentioned before is the current uh, stage well, stage magic champion of the Magic Circle. Um, we have uh, Paul Magram and Scott Pepper as well. Uh, so yeah, massively loads of lectures, loads of all cool stuff going on. Uh, Tom Crosby is going to be there. If I haven't mentioned Tom Crosby before, um, it's an interesting one, Tom Crosby. He's a really, really nice guy. But what he does isn't necessarily magic. He's, he's released loads of magic routines and lots of magic tricks. and He's a brilliant magician, um, but his one-man show isn't about being a magician. His one-man show is about being a performing nerd. Um, the idea is that he spent his entire life picking up lots of useless skills and then he puts them in a show together. So he does like a Rubik's Cube routine, which is incredible. Um, he does, you know, a thing where he can figure out what word you're thinking of due to the statistical rate of you choosing this word and all this kind of stuff. Uh, he's actually just been recently, uh, recently accepted into Mensa. Um, actually, for being so, basically, he's a genius. Um, so he's a, uh, yeah. He's, 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 the whole show is based around how to. Uh, how he's just picked up loads of weird, bizarre, random things. I don't want to give away the ending uh, of his show, but he does do this great thing with Rubik's Cubes where um, he, he, you know, someone mentions a, a name of a celebrity and he makes them out of Rubik's Cubes. He's got like 100 Rubik's Cubes and makes the picture of them out of Rubik's Cubes, which is stupid. Um, but yeah, but he's got a whole other thing as well that's going on the end of that. Uh, it's incredible. He's also going to Edinburgh, so if you go up to Edinburgh French Festival, go and check him out. Uh, and Edward Hilson as well is doing a one-man show. Uh, and uh, also in attendance we have Sooty as well. Uh, so Sooty and Richard Cadell are going to be there at the IBM as well. Because uh, obviously Sooty is a magician. Uh, for those that know Sooty and Sweep, Sooty is a magician. A very well, very good magician. Amazing magician. He's got his own magic wand and everything. Uh, so, so he's going to be there at the IBM with Richard Cadell. Uh, I imagine helping him out and, uh, with some tricks and things like that. 
So, uh, so yeah, it's going to be at the uh, the Williams Building and the Devonshire Park Theatre, uh, Devonshire Park Theatre in Eastbourne. And if you want to check it out, go on the BritishRing.org.uk for tickets. I imagine there's still tickets available. It's going to be an amazing weekend. It's going to be an amazing time. Go down and check it out. Uh, okay. Also on uh, Talking Tricks this week, which is a podcast, uh, we have Magic Sing. Now, uh, for those that don't know, Magic Sing is it's been around in magic for a while now. Um, very, very, very long time. I remember watching his YouTube videos and stuff like that um, when I was first learning and going, oh, that's really awesome, that's really cool. Um, but yeah, so he's going to be on Talking Tricks and he's performed at 10 consecutive Glastonbury festivals, which is incredible, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, I actually looked at his Instagram account before coming here today and he has videos up at the moment of him performing at Glastonbury. So you can see kind of like the stuff he does and he's doing mind reading and things like that. Uh, he's talking about the problems of using paintballs and knives in magic, which sounds quite interesting. Uh, how to make yourself an Instagram, how to make yourself um, massive on Instagram, how to market yourself, and how to become an influencer. Because uh, when I checked, he does have was it forty one point five thousand followers on Instagram, which I mean I, I don't know a lot about Instagram, but to me that sounds like a lot. Um, you know, I know compared to like maybe someone else like a Kardashian, who I imagine they have millions, but for a magician who not necessarily anyone has really heard of, that sounds that's that's that's, that's a lot to me. Um, Forty one thousand. So uh, even if you're just watching this and going, you know, oh, I'm kind of into magic, but I'm really into Instagram. If you listen to this podcast, it might give you tips, hints, and tips on how to be an Instagram influencer yourself um, and other bits and pieces. So that would be quite interesting. Also, he's talking about how he does corporate events and how he does weddings. He's got his own special way of doing that. I even though he has his own special playing cards printed. Uh, so instead of using just normal bicycle cards like every magician normally does, he's had his own sent, uh, been made by the US playing card company, sent over to him with his own design and stuff like that so that fit in with his theme and everything. Um, he'll be talking about all of his TV appearance. He performed on the Friday Night Project which I believe is on Channel 4, yeah. um, and he also does, uh, apparently he's performed on Thai Breakfast Television as well, which is a bit of a weird one, but sounds great. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's also done a TEDx talk as well. Uh, so, so he'll be doing, doing all that on Talking Tricks, which is this week, which, uh, but obviously it's a podcast, so it'll be around for ages. So go ahead and check it out. You can find it on iTunes, you can find it on Podbean, and you can find it on Acast as well. So definitely go and check it out, Magic Sing on Talking Tricks. Now, we've got a bit of a, an interesting one to talk about this time. Uh, obviously, we've talked about other magicians in the past. We've, so far, we've talked about Darren Brown, and we've talked about David Copperfield. This is a bit of, a, a bit of an interesting one, really. Uh, Mark Raffles, who is someone that you will not have heard of, probably, has retired from magic at 97. He was the oldest performing magician in the United Kingdom. He's only just retired at 97. I know that last year he was performing at a friend of mine's show, and he's, yeah, he's, he's just suddenly decided that enough's enough at 97, he's gonna sit back and, and have, a, have a relax, which is amazing. Uh, but yes, apparently he's been uh, on TV and in theatres for more than 80 years, which is mental. Uh, he's now retired to London now. He was born in 1922 in Manchester, and apparently his entire family were entertainers as well. His mum actually worked with Charlie Chaplin, which is really cool. Uh, he, was, uh, he was, he couldn't join the army, he wasn't allowed to join the army because he had a, a stammer. So he wasn't allowed, a very, very strong, severe stammer. So what he decided to do was work on his silent magic act. So at 16, 17, he was working on a silent magic act, put it together and performed with his family. And then the, uh, was it the, here we go, the Entertainment National Service Association, ENSA, uh, saw his act and they were like, oh, this guy is brilliant. So they actually sent him over to France or that kind of thing in World War Two to go and entertain the troops. So straight after D-Day, he was there entertaining the troops and showing them his magic and things like that, which is an amazing piece of history, really. Uh, he did that for three years. And then he, since then, so he, he then developed a pickpocketing act while he was doing that, which is what he got famous for in magic. He's, he's, he's well known for being an amazing pickpocket. And then he just kept going that and doing that, and he performed under the name Ray St. Clair. So if you don't know Mark Raffles, you might have heard of Ray St. Clair, and um, you know, so a lot of older people might have actually heard of that. Uh, funnily enough as well, his wife and his three kids followed him into showbiz. They did game shows and things like that in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. 
and he's a life member of the Inner Magic Circle with a gold star, which is the highest rating you can ever get in the Magic Circle, which just goes to show how well loved he was by magicians and how hard he worked uh, to become a life member as well. So, you know, he doesn't need to worry about having to join again or anything like that. They've just gone, you know, oh, you're really, really good. You know, come and join us. He's also uh, an ex-president of the IBM, which is what we talked about earlier, the International, British, uh, the International Brotherhood of Magicians. And he's also an ex-president of the Blackpool Magicians Club, which, again, the biggest magic convention in the world. So, uh, Mark, we wish you all the best with your retirement, and we hope it treats you well. We hope you stay around for a, very, for a lot longer now, because, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing, that, that, that the achievement you've done. I've heard of a lot of magicians recently, um, that sounds a bit weird and a bit odd to say this, but a lot of magicians are, that are big or well-known in, in the magic world in this way have actually, in the past year, have died doing the job kind of thing. So they might have been, you know, in the 70s, they might have been 30 or 40 kind of thing, but they've died being a magician. It's really rare that you hear of a magician actually retire. So, you know, because normally we just keep going and going and going. It's really bizarre that this is actually an occurrence. But he, yeah, good on him. At 97, I, I can imagine he's had enough. I know I would at 97. So as I said, Mark, we wish you all the best with your retirement and enjoy it, mate. Um, okay, now next up we have a show, a very awesome show it sounds to me, uh, called Curiosity by a man called Joel Anthony. Uh, Joel Anthony is a uh, is from Brisbane. Um, sorry, hang on, Melbourne. My bad. Sorry, Joel. Uh, Melbourne, Australia, and he's coming over to London with his new show called Curiosity. Uh, he's been perfecting his craft for over ten years. It promises to be an intimate evening of sleight of hand and impossible mind reading. It's £15 on the door if you want to come down and check it out. It's at the Water Rats in King's Cross on the 16th of August. So unfortunately I can't go because I'm in Edinburgh, but if you're around in London, fancy going to see an awesome magic show, go and check it out. I can only think that it's going to be an amazing evening. Uh, with it being intimate as well, I imagine lots of card tricks, lots of close-up things, uh, a few coin bits and pieces. But close-up magic is always the best kind of magic, especially when it's really, really close-up and full-on, because then there's no way for you to figure out how it could be done, which is amazing. And I love that. That's one of my favourite things to do when it's not on stage, you know, just close-up, because then there's no way out kind of thing. It's wonderful. Um, okay, now we also have another podcast to talk about which is uh, Mark Leverage. Mark Leverage has been a magician for years and years and years. Um, very well known for doing amazing dealer dems and uh, selling lots of awesome products and things like that. He's a guy that does Magic Scene magazine as well, which I talked about last week. Um, so he's doing his July 2019 podcast. Uh, so this is kind of like a, a mashup of all the podcasts that he's done so far. So if you've missed some, this is kind of like the best bits of this year so far. So he's going to uh, be discussing whether social media ever actually delivers in terms of bookings when it comes to magic. You know, is it worth our time actually putting in all this effort on social media, uh, putting out videos, putting out this, putting out that, putting the other? Does it convert into bookings or is it best off just left to, you know, our website and our SEO and that kind of thing? Um, do cancellation fees, uh, anyway, it's, it's, a good, it's a good conversation, it's actually, do cancellation clauses in contract are they actually more trouble than they're worth? Uh, which I think is actually quite a good discussion. Um, especially, you know, a story that I heard recently about um, uh, a bride wanting to cancel a, a magician for some reason. And, um, and he was like, well, you can't because of this thing here and this thing here in the contract. And she's like, no. But, but, you know, just go sign the contract. I want to cancel it. No, you can't. You know, it's like, you've got to pay me this, this amount of money. And it's kind of like, no, we don't want to. So, yeah, I think that would be quite an interesting discussion uh, to listen to. Um, a discussion on whether or not... You, it's an interesting one as well. A discussion on whether or not, you, as a magician, you feel more uncomfortable performing for your family and your friends or whether you feel more uncomfortable performing for strangers. Um, personally, I can see where this is coming from because, obviously, a stranger... If you're going to perform for someone on the street, they don't know who you are. So you can create your own persona, you can create your own character, you can create your own kind of uh, vibe around what it is that they're going to experience. So for instance, I could go to you and be like, oh yeah, amazing, do you want to see this cool card trick? And if that didn't work, I can then go to the other person and go, you're right, do you want to see some magic? And you know, you can, you can then change it to see what fits you and what works best with you. Whereas your family and your friends, um, obviously they know who you are, so you can't really develop a character on top of that. And also, chances are, if you've been doing magic for a while, they've seen it all before. So, because you were the first person to go, oh, you want to see this cool new trick? 
and they were like, yeah, cool, and now they're bored of seeing the match. So, um, so I can see both sides of the argument, really. Um, so yeah, that's kind of another interesting discussion point. Uh, when creating magic, this is a good one. When magic, this is a very, very good topic. Uh, this is something that I've heard lots of creative magicians talk about. Um, is when you create a new magic trick, do you first start with how you do it, or do you start with what you want to end up with? Because do you want to? So so yeah. So do do you first go? You know, I want to be able to make this microphone just do just go up and down like that, or do you go? If I attached a wire there, then I could make that go up and down. You know, it's it's whichever way you, you look at it. You know, so do you go in your head? Do you think I want to create this effect, or do you go? Oh, I can do this cool thing with a pen. Oh, I know what I can do with that. So again, another interesting discussion point. I know a lot of um, performers and different magicians have different viewpoints on this. I think the general viewpoint on it is uh, we create the effect first. So we create what we want to achieve first. So uh, at the moment, you know, I'm working on something where I want a page to disappear from somewhere and appear somewhere else. So I know that's what I want to do but I'm not quite sure how to get there yet. So that's, that, so that's where I'm kind of, that's where I kind of am, am with the creative process. And personally what I do is I just get loads of stuff. I get an idea, I write down the idea, and then it normally I wake up at you know, one o'clock in the morning after I've been watching something on Netflix and then go, oh, this thing that I've been thinking about for ages, how do I do it? And I just watch your Netflix and I'll go, I got it, I got it! And I write it down and then I go, oh no, I'm too excited, I need to build it now. And just, you know, at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning, just downstairs in the kitchen with card and random pieces of paper everywhere and sticky tape and glue. It's like, it needs to be done, it needs to be done. Uh, so that's my own personal viewpoint on it. Um, but again, everyone has their own different views, everyone has their own different ways, but that's how I go about it. Uh, another good topic here is, um, is it always best to get to the, uh, is it best to get to the punchline? So is it best if you put a banknote in a lemon, is it better to make the banknote appear in the lemon straight away? Or is it better to make the banknote vanish and then wait and do something else for a bit and completely forget about that and then at the end go, oh, by the way, in this lemon there's a banknote. You know, which is better? Is it, is it always better to go straight in with the, oh, it's vanished, it's now on the lemon, or is it better to wait and go, oh, it's vanished. Do, 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 trick, 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 trick. Oh, by the way, it's in the lemon. Uh, you know, different ways and different viewpoints of looking at it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and another one, which is, again, a bit of a businessy one, uh, do agencies, do online booking agencies for magicians encourage cheaper rates? Um, personally, I'm not going to talk about this because this isn't what uh, this show is all about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very interesting topic. I, don't, I can see where Mark's coming from with this one. But, uh, but yeah, so I highly recommend going to check this out. I know as soon as I get an opportunity when I get back home, I'm definitely going to give this a listen. It sounds amazing. It sounds really, really good. It sounds right up the street and um, right up my street and with certain things that I've been currently thinking of and other bits and pieces. It's going to help me out a lot, I reckon. So you can find that on Mark Leverage's website and it's also on Podbean as well, like the other one that we talked about before. So yeah, definitely, if you can find it, you know, go and check it out. It's going to be a really, really good one. So definitely check that one out. Um, also, on a, another weird, interesting note, it is the 110th birthday of the Order of the, Mag of, of the Magi. And that's in Manchester. Apparently they had a very nice time. There was a barbecue and all that kind of thing, which is always fun. Uh, so, so happy birthday to the Order of the Magi over there in Manchester. I know a few of your members and you're all lovely, wonderful people. I've been a couple of times as well. They always hold amazing lectures as well. Uh, the current one that's coming up is Andrew Normansell, who has done a few DVDs and things in the past. I think this is, I think his lecture this time is looking at his bizarre and interesting, like bizarre stuff like summoning ghosts and that kind of thing and how to do it and, and, and using tarot cards and magic and stuff like that. So that's what uh, he's doing in his new lecture. Uh, but yeah, happy birthday Order of the Magi and uh, I hope you had a great day on that barbecue. Now, our last thing that we talk about um, before I teach you guys a magic trick is a very good one. Uh, ghost stories uh, is a, 
I don't know whether you might have seen it or not, but there is. It, it, it was released in the cinema a couple of years ago. It's Andy Nyman who is the main role uh, of this. And the it's uh, before that it was released in. Uh, it, it's a, it's a theatrical piece. So it was done at the every sorry it's on the Playhouse in Liverpool. Uh, that was the first place that kind of came out. I remember I went to go and see it, and it was amazing. Uh, the uh, the whole plot was basically it's this psychologist played by Andy Nyman who was a magician. Uh, Andy Nyman, for those that don't know, uh, worked a lot with Darren Brown, so helped put Darren Brown's main shows together, uh, working with Andrew O'Connor as well. Uh, so Andy Nyman is basically kind of the brains behind Darren Brown in a way. He's the one that goes, why don't we try this or why don't we try that? Uh, he's also an actor as well. There are lots of films he's been in. You've definitely probably seen him in something, especially recently. Probably no idea who he is, but if you Google, if, yeah, if if you uh, watch a film, there's a high possibility that you might be in it. I think he was in. I think I think he was in Lord of the Rings. I don't know. I want to say he was, but I'm not going to commit to it. Um, if not Lord of the Rings, you know, something that, that kind of vibe. Um, but yeah, very very good actor. Uh, so yeah, so but I remember going. I said oh, I remember going to see this in the theatre when it first came out, and it was wonderful. Uh, the entire theatre of the Playhouse in Liverpool was decked out with. Um, lots of emergency tape like danger do not cross tape and there were loads of lights that were flickering and uh, you know that you can't so you kind of like a mine shaft that was the idea that they were going for and Andy Nyman came on stage and he was the, 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 the character of a psychologist and the idea was that him being a psychologist he has uh, talked to three different people uh, well many different people but these are his three favorite horror stories that they've told him and he's trying to then explain to them what actually happened so you know so gone oh well you know you might have seen a clown then but if you explain the environment that you were in and explain what the stress that you were under at the time the clown was probably actually this that or the other and other bits and pieces so it's him taking these horror stories and then these horror stories are acted out on stage um, so that you can see you know you're kind of in the story so he narrates it off stage while it's happening um, and then, uh, and then, because it's called Ghost Stories, I'm not gonna lie, it was scary. Uh, it was a bit for, for you know, you, you can think, oh, I'm going to the theatre. It's not gonna be that. It was. It was a very scary thing. There were lots of jump scares. It was one. It was really, really well done. And there's a massive twist at the end as well, which is brilliant, brilliant. Um, so you, I said, you can go and see it. Um, it they then made a film of it, um, and I believe Andy Nyman does play the main character again in the film. Um, so, so, so yeah, go, um, so if, you, if you're interested, check out the film. But why we're talking about today is because it's actually coming back to the UK. It's on a worldwide tour, and it's actually coming back to the UK. Uh, it's coming to the West End from September. So if you read the press release that we have here, we have Enter a Nightmarish World Full of... Uh, if I can read my own handwriting. Do, 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 do. Yes. Enter a nightmarish world full of thrilling twists and turns where all your deepest fears and disturbing thoughts are imagined alive on stage. A fully sens sensory and electrifying encounter, Ghost Stories is the ultimate in is the ultimate love letter to horror and a, to be on the edge of your seat theatrical experience like no other. Be it phantoms, poltergeists, or simply a bump in the night, let's play a game with fear. After exhilarating audiences across the world with record-breaking sellout shows and a smash out and a smash let, hit, uh, smash hit film, uh, Andy Nyman and Jeremy Dyson uh, worldwide cult phenomenon is back. It's going to be at the Ambassador Theatre in London, and you can book tickets at GhostStoriesLive.co.uk as well. Uh, as Andy Nyman is a very good magician. The, the reason why we're talking about it is because he's a magician, but also there are lots of magic effects actually in it. And the magic effects help to create the illusions of the ghosts and the poltergeists and the bumps and the scares and all that kind of thing. And it's absolutely wonderful. And for those that uh, noticed as well, I did notice, I did say uh, Jeremy Dyson. Uh, Jeremy Dyson is uh, one of the writers of The League of Gentlemen. So if you really like The League of Gentlemen, which is of course, you know, Reece, Reece Shearsmith, Mark Gattis and C. Pemberton. Uh, if you really like The League of Gentlemen in that kind of style, it is written in that kind of... 
uh, dark comedy, even though it's more dark than comedy, it's that sort of vibe of, um, you know, directed to be slightly dark comedy. So, yeah, I can highly recommend it. It is one of the best things I ever went to watch at the theatre. If you are in London, go and watch it. If don't, then go and buy the DVD or download it or however you want to do it. It, it is wonderful. Definitely go and check it out. Okay, so that's it for news. Um, so I thought that I would teach you guys a quick, simple trick, uh, if that's all right with everyone in internet world. Um, so what we're going to do is, it's more of a utility device. We're going to go over what's quite uh, possibly one of the simplest things in magic, um, and it's a coin thing. And it's something you can use at home, you know, just go and buy a, not go and buy a coin, uh, go and get a coin from, you know, your, your pocket or something like that. Uh, I've got a, a relatively biggish coin here. It doesn't have to be this kind of coin. This is a uh, silver florin, uh, just because it's fancy. And it's very, very simple. All we're gonna do is just take it over here and then it just vanishes. You know, it's a very, very easy, simple thing. So that's what I'm gonna teach you guys how to do. And um, what the method is called is it's called the French Drop. Now, I first found out about the French Drop in a book by J.B. Bobo, which is called Modern Coin Magic. It's still available now. You can go ahead and check it out. Um, Microphone. Oh, yep. Um, Yep, you can go ahead and check it out. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to teach you it. Very, very simple. Uh, so what we do is we have the coin here. We hold the coin like this. And then as you come over, your hand is going to come over here. And when the hand just closes a little bit, I'm going to take my hand out of the way. You're just going to drop the coin. Really, really easy. So I'll do it again without the hand. So that there, just drop the coin. Lift your thumb a little bit and you drop the coin, like that. Really easy, really easy. The other hand is just gonna do that, right? So just kind of like a grabbing action. But you're gonna combine the two. So I'm doing it this way, so I know you can't see the coin as well, but just for ease, because then you'll see what's happening here. So the thumb kind of comes behind the coin. So you're kind of like, you know, pincering the coin. But as you come over to grab it, you do the drop. So you drop the coin, and then you pretend to grab it. And then you bring your hand here, and everyone will think it's here. Um, what's happening here as well is, just to add a bit of extra bit to it, uh, we're doing something called a finger palm. So uh, so what's happening is the, uh, the coin, when it comes from French drop, is then landing on my, on my fingers here. It's landing on my middle finger and my fourth finger. If I'm being honest, it doesn't matter which finger it lands on, just as long as it lands on a finger, because otherwise it'll be on the floor, and that's bad. Uh, everyone will know how you did it. So what we're going to do is it's going to be here, come over, grab, it's landed on the fingers, and all I'm going to do is just curl the fingers. So if I curl the fingers, the coin stays there. So then I can just kind of do that, and it looks a bit natural. So as long as I put my hand here, it, it looks all good. You can't see that there's a coin in there. I mean, you can because you know it's there. But if I do it, you know, really, really quick, take the coin like that, and then vanish it, you know, you, no one's going to suspect that you've got a coin here. Um, you could also use the opportunity to ditch the coin if you wanted to. So uh, we could do a situation where um, if I wanted to get rid of the coin, so I want, so the, the coin is going to end up in my pocket here. So we'll go here like this, we'll take the coin like that, French drop, and as well, we're looking over as well, we're following this hand, because everyone will follow where your head follows. It's weird, it's a bizarre thing. So we'll do that again. So we grab the coin, pretend to grab the coin, we drop it, we grab, we follow over here, this hand just drops naturally. And then we take it to the pocket, we drop it in the pocket, we can show this hand empty now, and then we can look here, and it's vanished, and we can do that. So remember, it's very, very easy, it's very, very simple, but it takes work. Like everything we do in magic, it takes work. So we'll try it once more. <coughs> so now I try it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come along and join it. Give it a go. Ah, magic. There you go. Right. So... So we hold it like this. Yep. So thumb, index finger, middle finger. Yep. This hand comes over here like this. Yep. Ah, it's in my hand. You've got to drop it, James. You've got to drop okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. So it goes to here. Yeah. Yep. All right. And then I'm um, like that. Drop it. Yep. Take it. Then this hand, so as soon as you take it, 
this hand just drops and your head follows the hand. So you do that kind of thing. Yep. Give it again? So, wait, so if wait. You want... <laughs> no way. So you do here, yep. You uh -huh. pretend to grab it out. So you pretend to grab it. So I pretend to grab it? Yep, okay. And then this hand drops and your head follows this hand over here. Oh, right. Yep. And then you do a magic move and it vanishes. Yeah. So when you see it, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, so guys, that's the French drop. It's relatively easy to do. As I said, it just takes practice. It's one of those things. You just gotta try and give it a go, um, see whether or not it works for you, and uh, try it out. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's been Party Tricks. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you next time. Enjoy your day, guys. Have fun.